Welcome to another episode of Mexican in the Kitchen. This time I'm making a very simple, very easy version of barbacoa. Barbacoa would usually be made with maguey leaves. I'm not sure how easy it's to get those kind of leaves outside of Mexico, at least here in Finland I have not seen them, I doubt you can find them. But it's quite easy to go to an Asian store and find these banana leaves. These are optional, but they will give quite nice flavor to your barbacoa. They're usually frozen, so I leave them one day before on the fridge. I also rinse them and then I put them into a hot pan or a skillet. This is again on a 3 or 4 out of 6 on the stove. I just want to warm the leaves up and you will notice how they start changing color. This is only to make them more flexible and less likely to break when we are handling them. For this recipe I'm using a steamer. I'm going to add half an unpeeled garlic. I'm also adding one onion cut in half. It's a medium sized onion, if you have a big onion just put half of it in there. I'm adding 3 or 4 bay leaves. And I'm adding 1 or 2 cups of chickpeas. The amount is to your taste. I bought them dry and I left them in water for the whole night. If you are using pre-cooked or canned chickpeas, you can add them 15 minutes before your barracoa is ready. I'm adding some salt at this point. Of course, you can taste it later and add more if you want to. Then I'm going to add some water. This will be cooking for a while, so this pot is 5 liters. I'm going to add probably 4. Usually when we steam, we will add only water. But now I'm putting the second part. This is because we're going to make a kind of oven where the water will stay inside and we will get both our steamed meat and also we will get a broth out of it. If you don't have the banana leaf, you can add the meat right away. But as I said, this is going to give a lot of flavor. So we want to make a bed out of it. Barbacoa is usually made underground. It's made in this kind of primitive oven. And it is usually made with lamb. Of course you can use beef or some other kind of meat you like. This time I'm using lamb, I'm using the leg and also some ribs. On every layer you add, try to add some salt. If it's this thick grain salt it will be even better. I'm also adding the leftover garlic I have. And I'm throwing in also another onion cut in half. At this point I think I still have some space so I'm going to add another couple pieces of meat. I will add some more salt and finish everything with some black pepper. Depending on how big your pot is you can keep repeating the process add layers of meat and just keep seasoning. To finish this I'm just going to cover everything with my banana leaves. It's not going to be perfect the banana leaves might break but try to cover everything as much as you can. Usually you would just cover your pot, but remember we don't want to let too much steam out. And in this case my steamer is not too big, so I won't be able to close the lid. So what I will do is take some aluminum foil and try to seal my pot as good as I can. Of course there will still be some steam leaving our pot, but it will be way less than if we just close it with the normal lid. As you can see, now we are all set. We have our water prepared, we have our meat prepared, and we are going to put it on the stove. My stove will be on high for about 10 minutes. Once our water starts boiling, then I'm going to turn it down into a 3 out of 6. So it will be a medium fire, and I'm going to leave it on the stove for about 4, 4 and a half hours. Keep in mind that you have to keep an eye on the water. Especially on the first time you make this, I will keep an eye on the water level about every half an hour. I'm using about 3 kilos of meat and for this amount I would say you would expect to have probably 2 liters of the broth at the end. Of course it depends on how concentrated you want it. If you think the water starts being a bit too low just add some more. My barbacoa has been cooking for about 4-4.5 four, four hours now. And I'm going to remove the aluminum foil. You have to be careful because there's a lot of steam coming out and the aluminum foil is going to be quite hot. Now we can remove our banana leaves and we will see the meat is there. It's quite At this point it should also be extremely tender. I like to get my meat from the Middle Eastern stores or you can also get it from some market. I like it because at least here in Finland that's the places where you can choose the cut and in some places they will cut it for you. In this case they were cutting the leg for me and as you can see the cut, there's still the bone, there's the bone marrow inside, that bone marrow will give a really nice flavor, you can take it out of the bone and put it into the meat and you could pick the kind of meat you want but in this case I would prefer to just shred everything, mix it together, 
see how tender it looks, see how nice the color, the smell is amazing, I can tell you. And I prefer to mix some of the more greasy parts with the more lean parts and have a bit of everything. In this case I was trying to grab some piece of meat, but it's just so tender that the bones are coming right off the meat. So now our meat is ready, the broth should be ready on the part below. For serving this I'm going to make some tacos and you need some good sauce and my favorite sauce for having barbacoa is the green sauce. Unfortunately here in Finland you cannot always get tomatillos so I'm using this Pirka brand green sauce. Brand doesn't really matter, I think most of them taste quite the same. For one jar of green sauce I'm going to add half of the jar of water. I will then add half an onion or one small onion. I will add half a cube of chicken stock. I will season with some salt. I'm adding some fresh chilies. I got this from the Middle Eastern store. You can also add some jalapeno if you don't eat too much spice. And I'll finish with a handful of coriander. And then we will blend everything together and we'll have a really quick, really simple, really tasty green sauce. No need for boiling the tomatillos. And you will remove a lot of this bitter or acid taste that the ready-made sauces come with. Blend it for as long as you like. Some people like it more chunky. I like to liquefy it a bit more. Once you're done, pour it on a bowl, put it on the table and just let anyone take as much as they want. You can add some chopped avocado in there if you want a bit more of an extra flavor. Barbacoa has to be eaten with tortillas, especially with corn tortillas. For warming up your tortilla, just put a hot pan or skillet, or even if you have a grill, you can warm it up there. Just put it on one side, once it's warm, flip it over. If you're not using it right away, just store it on a kitchen towel. Just fold it in half, put them in between and take them to the table. The way I would serve barbacoa is set a tortilla on a plate, set a bowl or a cup where you can have the broth. I will usually put everything on the table and everyone can take whatever they like. I'm going to take some of the meat and put it into my tortilla. I'm going to add some chopped onion into my consomme or broth and also into my taco. I will also add some chopped coriander. I will add a few drops of lime juice into my broth and also on my taco. And finally I'm going to top my taco with some of the green sauce I made. You can use any kind of sauce you prefer but I think this green sauce goes perfect with barbacoa and the broth. This is how I make barbacoa. Uh, this is the kind of meal that I really like. It's something that you will usually have on Saturday or Sunday on the, in the morning or as a lunch. It's quite nice, especially if you're a bit hangover. It's quite nice of a dish. You have a bit of the warm soup, really meaty, really greasy. Then you have a taco with it and they go really nice together. And this is one of those dishes that has many variations. If you go to the north, there's going to be more chili in the soup or in the broth. Um, if you go to some places, they will have some chili on the meat and they will leave it there overnight. And then when they cook it, you will see the meat turns quite red. There's many, many variations. Everyone has their own recipe. Everyone does this dish however they like. But the idea is the same. They usually put this on a hole underground that's a traditional way, but if you do it on, on a steamer, you will get that kind of very similar texture and then all the meat and the juices drops. That's what makes a really nice broth. You can put some carrots, some vegetables in the soup also. That's up to you. There's a lot of people that put like some carrot, maybe some potatoes. You can put some other herbs if you like in the soup. This is one of those dishes that you will get the idea of how it's made and then you can do whatever you prefer but I really hope you like the video you enjoyed the recipe try it at home press like subscribe all those kind of things and see you in the next one